This is the classic stereotype of Poland, a grey, poor, post-communist country with nothing to offer but cheap, unqualified labor. But this stereotype is no longer true, and Poland of today looks more like this. In the past 30 years, Poland went through an incredible transformation, growing more than any other economy in Europe, and faster than Asian tigers like Singapore, South Korea, or Taiwan. Today, Poland is emerging as a major technological hub. The Polish economy might overtake the UK by 2030, and after years of suffering from a massive brain drain, highly skilled Poles are now coming back home. And it goes way beyond the economy, as Poland is building one of the most powerful militaries in Europe, and quickly becoming one of the most influential European countries. As all of these changes continue to pick up pace, it's getting impossible to ignore Poland's growing importance. But there is still one thing that could destroy the entire Polish military. Miracle. A threat not from the outside, but from within. So how did Poland manage to become Europe's biggest success story? Why is it doing so much better than everyone else? And what is the challenge threatening to end everything that it has achieved? This is the rise of Poland. But first, a word from the sponsor of this video. Blinkist. Right now on Blinkist, I'm reading On War by Karl von Clausewitz, probably the most influential book on military strategy in modern history. It's a book that I wanted to read for a long time, but I never really managed to get to it because, well, it's 700 pages long and not exactly an easy read. And that's why Blinkist is so useful. Blinkist is a service that helps you find the most valuable books and podcasts and understand their key ideas in bite-sized pieces of content so that it doesn't take more than 15 minutes. They have over 6,500 titles available to read or listen to as audiobooks. And now they have a new feature called Blinkist Spaces that allows you to create your own space where you can add, share, and recommend titles from the Blinkist library all in one place, including with people who don't have Blinkist subscription. Right now, you can get 25% off Blinkist annual premium and start your 7-day free trial by clicking here. So thanks Blinkist for sponsoring, check the link below to subscribe, and now back to the video. But to understand why Poland's transformation is such a big deal, we need to understand where it started from. In the 20th century, after becoming the first country to be invaded by Nazi Germany and losing 20% of its population in World War II, Poland became part of the Eastern Bloc as one of the Soviet-controlled satellite states. Like in the rest of the Eastern Bloc, the 40 years of communism were times of deep deep economic isolation, stagnation, and overall hopelessness. Poland had to import the Soviet system of centrally planned economy, where state owned almost everything, private businesses were mostly non-existent, and since they were basically a Soviet colony, the Polish economy was subservient to interests of the Soviet Union, and forced to make, buy and sell whatever Moscow wanted it to, whether it made economic sense or not. As a result, the centrally planned economy was deeply dysfunctional and mismanaged, crippled by constant shortages of basic goods and lack of resources. When the communist regimes of Eastern Europe finally fell in 1989 and Poland became free and independent, it emerged from behind the Iron Curtain as one of the poorest countries in Europe, with highly dysfunctional infrastructure and public services, and with basic no experience with capitalism and participating in a global economy. The average salary was 10 times lower than in Germany, and the country was struggling with hyperinflation. In other words, it wasn't a country you would bet on to become a major success. But skip 30 years ahead into the future, and that's exactly what happened. So how did Poland do it? From 1992, Poland managed to grow consecutively for almost three decades, achieving the longest period of growth in modern European history. Now, not many countries are able to do that, and the reason is that usually when they find a successful strategy, they tend to stick to it long after it stops working. But Poland, so far, managed to find a different growth strategy for each of the three decades, which allowed it to grow so fast for so long. 
Starting in the early 1990s, its main challenge, like in every other post-communist country, was how to transition from a centralized state-owned economy to a capitalist one. In most countries, these transitional reforms were in one way or another quite problematic. Either they took too long or they became pretty corrupt, and much of the state wealth was transferred into hands of a few wealthy oligarchs who got rich because of their political connections. Poland, on the other hand, managed this transition arguably better than others. It transitioned to capitalism quickly, but privatized most of the state-owned companies slowly, and a few years later than most of its neighbors, after the chaos calmed down and after it became a little bit harder to steal everything. Thanks to that, it became pretty much the only post-communist country without an economy dominated by oligarchs and without an economic crash in the 1990s. But despite the good start, in the early 2000s, this wasn't enough anymore in order to grow, and so the next phase was about globalization. In 2004, Poland joined the European Union and the open European market with a free movement of goods and services. Without any barriers between Poland and the rest of Europe, it made sense for Western European companies to move their manufacturing over to Poland, where they had a large and a very cheap pool of workers at their disposal. And while these companies kept most of the profit, Poland got enough out of it to keep growing at a pretty fast pace. And joining the EU brought another major benefit, since one of its key principles is redistribution of money from wealthier member states to the less developed ones, in order to balance the wealth disparity across the Union. After joining, the Eastern European states started to receive a lot of money, and Poland managed to use them to build and improve everything from roads to universities, and again, in a lot more efficient way than in many other Eastern European countries. But that can still only take you as far, and many countries following a similar trajectory eventually fall into the so-called middle-income trap. If your economy is based on providing cheap labor for foreign companies, you can only grow to a certain level. And if you can't offer anything else apart from that, and you don't have any major companies of your own, you're stuck. But so far, Poland seems to be avoiding that. 15 years ago, foreign companies were coming in to hire low-skilled and low-paid workers for menial labor. But today, they're coming because Poland has one of the largest pools of engineering talent in Europe. And instead of warehouses and basic factories, companies like Google are opening research and development hubs. Now, that said, Poland is still relatively poor, at least compared with most of Western Europe. But the growth so far has been impressive and unusually inclusive. Average wages in the country massively increased while inequality remained low. And so it's not a growth that would only exist on paper or only help select few, but it actually trickled down to the rest of the society. And there's one more area outside of economic growth where Poland has been getting a lot of attention lately, and that's its unprecedented military buildup. Historically, Poland has some good reasons to be a little paranoid. Stuck between Germany and Russia, it has been invaded, partitioned, colonized, and stripped of its independence time and time again. And even though today it's in NATO, this historical memory is still there. And while most European countries were taking their peace dividends, Poland has kept military funding at one of the highest levels in NATO. And after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, it went into an overdrive. It announced that in just a few years, it will increase its military spending to 5% of its GDP, higher than any other NATO member, double the size of its armed forces to 300,000, and buy thousands of tanks, fighter jets, and other military equipment. And before the end of the decade, Poland plans to have the most powerful ground forces in Europe, in what would be one of the most ambitious military buildups in modern European history. Now, that being said, what Poland has achieved so far is impressive, and what it plans to achieve even more so. But it's yet to be seen if all that will actually happen. Despite its successes, there are some significant risks that could kill the entire Polish miracle, and not everyone is so bullish on Poland's future. 
For a long time, demography has been considered the number one threat, as around half a million people have left the country in the last 30 years. But now it looks like Poland managed to reverse this trend. In recent years, it has seen a reverse brain drain, as Poles and people with Polish heritage living abroad have started coming back to the country. And since the country took in over one and a half million Ukrainian refugees, the demographic trends are looking much better. And so there are really two major risks. First, while the growth has been impressive, Poland has not actually avoided the middle income trap completely. So far, it's still massively reliant on foreign investments. And although tech centers are being opened in Warsaw, they are set up by foreign companies rather than by Polish ones. And while that brings jobs and growth, once again, there is a limit to how high you can grow since most of the profits will always end up leaving the country in the end. In order to break into the big leagues, you need your your own domestic giants in sectors with high added value. And Poland doesn't have that, or at least not yet. But the far bigger risk is of a completely different nature, and it concerns a part of the Polish story that we haven't touched on yet. The thing is that Poland is a deeply, deeply divided country, so much that we can almost talk about two different Polands, one liberal and progressive, and the other deeply conservative and religious. Like in the US, the two Polands are finding it increasingly difficult to coexist together, and surveys show that both sides are highly suspicious of each other, intolerant to opposing views, and increasingly refusing to compromise. And for years, the current conservative government has been criticized criticized by the liberal opposition for supposedly bending the rules in order to stay in power. And it has had a growing beef with the European Union that's threatening to cut Poland off from EU funds as a punishment for not upholding the rule of law. And the thing is that whatever side you cheer for, the end result is bad for both and for Poland in general. The country needs both parts of the population to coexist and work together. And it needs the EU if it wants to be truly successful. And if it doesn't manage to do that, the Polish miracle will be over soon, before it has really started.